Um, would you like a, a brief intro? A brief intro. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy to start whenever you are. You just tell me when to start and introduce the way that I'm doing this. I'm going to do a brief intro for you guys. Um, so our website is forgottenorigin.com and this is uh, the tea tidings and early into 2013 and we're discussing possibly one of the most important uh, topics around today which is um, reaching into the origins um, which of course then defines the way in which we see the unfolding of I guess of the future and the present. And of course, there's been some very interesting stories which I'm assuming you're going to share with us today about um, ancient Egyptians in Australia. And I'll, I may ask the other question to get involved, but take it away. You then, and then strong. Yeah, yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, so what we're going to do today is this is meant to be a discussion, not a presentation. So, by any, any stage you want to ask questions, then you may look like you need to. Please ask if we go. If I can, I want to give this a setting first. I want to uh, explain why we think this is so important. We've been privileged enough over the last 25 years to work with Aboriginal people all over the country. And we can actually say, and it sounds a bit pretentious, but I don't have all to say this, but the way it's actually should be said, that we've won the trust of elders who've given up secrets that have never been given before. I've been given ceremony, I'm, I'm been anointed as a spokesperson for the Gitable Nation. I've been working with Aboriginal people all over the country. And the story we're going to share with you today, you need to understand something, understand something to start this. We're going to talk about history, but it's not. We're actually going to talk about the heritage that we've been stolen from us as, as, as a person. I'm going to go back a bit and set this before we start with the place we're going to talk about today. I want to go back 10,000 years ago. I want to go back to a time when we believe, and I'm not going to go through the science we've done this, we've got books published by University Press of America proving through mitochondrial DNA, through Y chromosomes, through cell morphology, through blood grouping, that the original people are the very first people, and that all other peoples come from them. They do not come from Africa. All people come from here. Now, what we're going to do as we start this, before I go any further, we always do this the same way. All our work comes from the original people first. So they give us the clues, and then we go where we're taking from there. On occasions, we've gone to places we didn't expect we were going to go, and I can tell you one of the most recent places we're going to is a reluctant journey, I can assure you. But what we need to do first is to give a setting, and I'll explain why this needs to be done. If we're right, and if the original people are right, up until 10,000 years ago, maybe 8,000 years ago, every person on this planet lived under the tenets of the dream. And this took place for tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of years, that all people lived according to the rules of the dream. Now, that's very important for one reason alone. Because the dreaming says this. It says that you belong to the land, you're part of the land, created by that land. Now, what that means is this. Yes, the original people fought one another, but they never went and took someone's land, raped their children, raped their women, and stole. They couldn't do that. They couldn't even walk onto that land because it wasn't theirs to begin with. When warfare took place, there was an agreed place off country, to the side of country, where they would fight. Now, what you need to understand has never been invaded, never been stolen from, 
than the history they maintain has its integrity. Our history outside Australia, every other country has invasion, conquest and rewriting of history. What the original people are passing on to us is the way things were. But the important part of the story is, if you think line is, a time is a linear uh, quantity, then it doesn't count the shift, to be honest. But if time is circular, all this information up now and why we're privileged to be part of this is because they believe their ways will come again. This is the reason why they're giving this up. Every elder we've spoken to in the last two years has said the same thing. There's a change coming and the white fellas need to know the way they used to live. What they're saying is this, that the last five or six thousand years, our history and heritage have been by that. That it's natural for men to Natural part of our natural. This is the way we are. The Darwinism has infected all of our thinking. They're saying no. Originally, we were corrupted with beings that were seeking spiritual goals. That was the rule. So that is why we think the history that the original people are giving up today is so important because it really was the way we're supposed to behave, and they believe it will come again. Now, what I'm going to do first is before we go any further is to reaffirm that link we have with the past and reaffirm the fact that we are part of very ancient tradition. Okay, that's the first one. This is the centre, the creation place. Everything drifted away from here. Everything began here, will end here, and begin again. I have the bloodlines of all the people on the planet running through my brain. Okay, they were from three different elders, Kutchin, Vetjara, Artemar, and I think it's two, there were three different quotes and then saying exactly the same thing. What Evan's going to read from now is a stunning book for Voice of the First Day, an incredibly hard book to read. There's a quote on the back that was, oh, I see there's one just there, that was the base of where we began all of our research, and we always open with this because this is what we call our guiding lights. They say that we have been here for 60,000 years but it's much longer. We have been here since the time before time began. We have all come directly out of the dream time of the great dead ancestors. We have lived and kept the earth as it was on the first day. All other peoples of the world came. And ladies and gentlemen, that's where our science begins. All other peoples of the world come from us. What we're going to now do is we're going to go forward a fair bit and we're going to pick this story up about 4,770 years ago, and I can be that precise, I can actually be that precise and say this is what the author told us. We're going to pick up the story, the rules of the dreaming and, and, and the precepts of the dreaming were falling in all other countries, because by this time, agriculture, money, cities and conquests were taking place in all the other conflicts. So the original people retreated. They brought their boats back, and yes, ladies and gentlemen, we've got boats here, we'll show you today, that are part that are over 10,000 years old. They were the first sailors to believe it. They stopped sailing, but one country of all the other countries tried to keep that link going. Now, this link begins 4,770 years ago, and it's the ancient Egyptians, and I can tell you exactly where it finishes, and I'll tell you where. And this comes from the middle. It finished, they were here up until 400 years ago when some Egyptian priests, and I can't wait to give the details of where, stole some sacred objects from the middle. They were chased all the way ports in Australia, the Egyptian view, and Cambrew Island. And there they were at Balmoral when the people from the middle speared them coming back. So we're going to talk about a story that lasts for 4,370 years and we can be that, it will take 10 or 20 years and they are that precise with this because their history has been passed on from generation to generation and not a word changes. So, what actually happened was, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start by, we were called down to a place that we're going to call within two hours of Sydney. <coughs> We do not give up locations of these places, the places we've seen, we're not allowed to in some cases, so we keep very careful. And what Evan's going to do is, if you can, Evan is going to walk around a bit and show these pictures as we can. That would be hard. And we're going to start with the first one we saw. Now, this particular picture, 
ahead and we can type the real amount. There's the left. The very first, first rock platforms we went to in this region. We're told about an arc. Now, for ladies and gentlemen, for those who don't know what an arc is, it's a sacred object that we got off. Is other, how is it pronounced now, Evan? It's not just off, we've got that wrong. Dayhut. 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 That's how it should be said, but we recognise this thought. I'll use thought, but recognise the fact that it should be Dayhut. One of the things Thoth always carried with him, it was mandatory, it was an arc. Now, what we actually found is this particular site, we took about 20 photos of this, none of them come out, even standing on site, uh, upside down. I do apologise for my assistant, his first time out, he's bugging it up <laughs> as he goes along. Um, 20 photographs, and then we finally got this one here. And what you also notice, you probably can't, I was pointing out, well done, but it's over there, is there is a footprint of an ibis. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know this, the Thoth was depicted in two forms. One was half ibis, half human. There is the footprint of Thoth, and there is his aunt, and above is a sacred river that looks a bit like a bird. We're not sure what that is. We'll go back to that and work on that some more. Now, what that did... I've been told see this sort of stuff. I was open to it, couldn't see that. We saw the photograph and I started to see, yes, that is an uncle. By the way, there is no other symbol like that. Now, on its own, it's an interesting creation, but of course, that's not all we found there. It continues. The next one is a lot more graphic. You remember I said that Thoth or Deut is represented as being half human. Half uh, ibis and in profile form. The next one is exactly all those things. Take it to the machine first, Kevin. <laughs> he hasn't done this for a while, but he will be done. Right there, <laughs> take it around. When you look at this one, remember, ladies and gentlemen, original people do not do faces in profile. They need to show both eyes to see their soul. What you will find with this one is a couple of things. Number one, the bottom half is human. The top half, we've got an ibis head in profile. But what is more important, and that's why Evan's going to have to spin around twice, I want you to look at the two feet. There was a clue there. With the two feet, one foot is shorter than the other, and the other is a club foot. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's very important because that is the insignia of Duramulan, the son of Bayani, which would be our equivalent of Jesus Christ. Duramulan can only be uh, be depicted with a club foot and the other leg longer. So what we actually have here is something rather unusual. This is from the same region again, within two hours of Sydney. We've got the bottom half, which is one of the most sacred original deities there is, and then on the top half we've got an ibis in profile, profile form. That started to make us wonder which came first and why have we got the two deities together? Can you spin around to the other side please now, Evan? On the other side, go around again, you'll see another picture of the iris, and you'll also see an engraving. And we put this in to show you something about this story. This comes from Dampier, West Australia. Have a look. You will see Durham at the bottom again. You will see Thoth at the top, and then him reaching up towards the golden orb, which is wisdom. And by the way, don't forget, Thoth is the god of wisdom. So we're now just showing you that this is not just in one place. So by this time we're starting to think, okay, we can see but all of these rock platforms I'm showing you are purely original rock platforms. They're not anything else but that. Now, before I show this, I must ask this. I made this mistake once. Is there any person in this room, I'm only talking to the ladies in this room, that have been initiated through additional additional women? Good, because I can't show this picture to that person, I have to leave the room. I made that mistake once, didn't I? And I reached the woman to run out of the room and she was sick. But she didn't blame me, it was my mistake, but I'm never going to do that again. This is such a sacred uh, carving, original women will be sick if they look at it, and they can't look at it. Drummond is a men's, uh, a men's uh, spirit, and not for women. What we have next, and we will have to take this around so everyone can see this very first. 
What we have next is probably one of the most important engravings in this region. What you will see is Evan walks all the way around. You'll have to go all the way around so people can look just properly, Evan, while I take the time with it. It's Durham Mullen again. I haven't got a picture of the bottom half there, but trust me, one leg is shorter and the other one's got a flat foot. But what's he wearing? He's wearing Egyptian headdress. And more to the point, if you look, you find his facial features match that of a baboon or a monkey. Thoth had two incarnations. The most recent is Ibis. The one before was his monkey, and then it was half monkey, half human. With this one, you've got Durumulan again, and you've got Thoth in the more ancient monkey form. Now that's a real issue, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have primates in this country like that at all. There's nothing to base that off. Now this particular story is absolutely a nearly carbon copy of the story of Isis and Osiris. I'm not allowed to give up the whole story because it is too sacred, but I can tell you this. Alongside Durumulan, or Thoth, there's a female spirit that is fighting against the underworld and actually brings him back and reincarnates him, which is virtually the same story of Isis and Osiris. So what we there found is in this region, we're starting to see this repeat time after time after time. Then we go further. I just closed it. Well, it's gone back. Sorry? Then all of these, if we go outside the hour within two, a bridge within two hours of the city, I'll say so. I'm staying solely within there, and after a while, that's all we're going to go to. I'm staying to that region because you're going to find out later why this region is so important. When I introduce it, I'll fill you back into knowledge again. On the opposite side, and this is not as important, so I'm just going to hold this up very quickly, and Evan will do a quick run around with this. We found a second god. Thoth is the god of wisdom. This particular god, and I'll try and stand like this so to give you the idea what it looks like, he stands like this. That is the Egyptian god of inheritance, when you stand in that position with your hands open. We found this very, very close, of course, to Durhamul in ape form. So now we've found the second god. We found the god of wisdom and the god of inheritance. I'm thinking to myself, wisdom and inheritance, and they're engraved into original retardants. I'm starting to wonder which came first, the chicken or the egg. Now we're at the stage, ladies and gentlemen, where I'll skip those and we won't quite go through those. Let's get the program away from them. They're just different and stuff. We got asked for this place. We were taken to this place called Carrion. Is anyone familiar with the two walls of Carrion? I think a few people may know a little bit about it. Let me just fill it in very quickly before we go any further. There are two walls up in Gosford. They run from about here to about there, both sides, and they face each other, and there's a gap of about one wall is about here and the other one would stand about there and I've gone right away from the camera here. And those two walls on them are over 300 glyphs. They are, look fairly fresh. I'm going to be honest about that at the start. They do look quite fresh. And they run on two walls and up the top there there's sort of some sort of rock that leads that runs across it, goes round the back, and it has caused so much grief in that town. It's been claimed to be a hoax. It's claimed to have been done in 1975. A surveyor from Gosford City Council called Alan Dasson found a deranged Yugoslav, I didn't use those terms, he did, walking out with a city train chisel and said he did it all. Another group say Sydney Uni students did it in 1983. And they copied off the walls of something else in a book and got someone back to front and they did it. Uh, National Parks and Wildlife went there in 1988 and said it was 12 months old. It's a fake. And of course, there's another group responsible. Some of you might they said the hippies went down there and did you. <laughs> so everyone's been blamed, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone's been blamed for it. Looked at it, spent five minutes looking at it, say, are you? 
it looks okay, it looks interesting, but by God, it looks fresh. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to keep away from that. I've got enough Egyptian stuff. In fact, we've got more than this. I've just thrown a lot away there. I just want to get through that to show you where we came from. We had no interest in the glyphs. So, ladies and gentlemen, when I found out that the land there was for sale right alongside it, and a massive group of land inside, all national park was for sale, for the glyphs, I could care less. But I said I'd help them. But I wasn't going to help the glyphs. I was going to help with this. I'm going to take that one around. Right near where the land for sale is, near where the glyphs are, is this. This is the only engraving like this in Australia of Durham Woolen in his most ancient form. Coming out of the centre is someone view of the whole Milky Way. He controls it. Two, four metres. This, this particular carving is life size. It's the size of us. We actually found this when we're walking through the rock platform and come upon the most amazing rock platform that is in this country. He is the second most important engraving. My army is also on this side. I knew that place had to be saved. I couldn't give a stuff about the glyphs. I knew that people would walk onto that place. They might walk onto that place. That's the reason can't even do that. And they would get sick. Be fine. I've been to places where people get sick. I know that happens. We got involved to say that this were nothing by comparison. Because, ladies and gentlemen, there were too many question marks and too much, and all of academia and some of the sales are hopes to dismiss. End of story, we were at home. And that's for a state for a while. And then what happened was, piece by piece, I started here. First up, Arnie Mini Mace. Bella gave us a sacred, some sacred objects. We looked at them and she said she picked them up between the walls. We looked at them and said, okay, fine, I'm going to show them to you soon. But it's a little bit of a And we weren't going to put a name to them. We've been to somebody asked us before and we would not even talk about the group. Then, finally, Spears and Uncle David Fitzgerald, they were fed up. They just strayed since 1980. So they the white for the spider monks themselves. Only Bev had been with us, and we had a film crew that earlier, and that film crew had gone up and said, Would you like to speak about the film? What do you want to do? Go away. Don't want to talk. Only Bev brings me up and says, I want to give it up. So, so what then happened was, and it's on one of our YouTubes, the second one, we did a 45 minute interview, uh, interview with Only Bev and David Fitzgerald. And we got the whole truth. And this is where this story begins. It starts with this. Only Bev said for the first time, yes, it is ancient Egyptian. The story that we thought we knew, and the story goes something like this, two brothers came to this land, their boats were stranded, they got stuck here, they went through a drought for two seasons, Nefertaru went wandering off to the west and on the way back he got bitten by a snake, he got once or twice and they buried him there. That's pretty wild stuff. She said, it's right. Said, okay, fair enough. And then she gave us a clue. He said, the this. You wonder why they look so ancient. I'm going to say you. What's the idea? He said, the women, the dark and young women, would go up to the bliss for a couple of years and coat them in women's urine. He stick them. They keep them fresh. Ah, that answers a couple of questions. Now I've got the elders talking to people. Then I have no guidance on this place. But I don't act until I have guidance. Now we start to get some. Then we get big. David Fitzgerald was the National Park hired by National Parks. They say they didn't see it until 1983. They're lying. This is where it starts to get a little bit interesting. They're lying. They could still work for National Parks and Wildlife. They knew about this place in 1978. And what we had to do was build the boss said he didn't want to choose to try to hide the place, they were going to cover it up. 
What the guy did was he found a stack of stock. He told him about the stack of stock. He said, guess what? Now he's gone. If I get to the point, this is an option. You show me the police, I'll show you the site. And they negotiated for a month. And finally, I'm taken to the site. And it's in our YouTube and it's in the interview on the festival. He was taken to us. He was sworn not to tell anyone. Very long. The two walls and one row of And underneath it were ponds and ponds and ponds. driving a bulldozer and acknowledging it was artificially made, drove the bulldozer on top of the roof and broke the roof and fell in. So from 1960, the reason why this roof was so new was it was completely sealed off from the outside like the women would go up and poke fresh and that's why no ladies and gentlemen, we just got off the work of my institute to my from the person who met with the best driver. Well, that's not something that we can do. It's not much of a problem. So now, we have a question to that we're going to change now. I'm going to get it. It's one of the experiences that we're going to do. She gave us this piece of metal here. Now, the metal, and you see, it's crammed up the top here. That was completely circular, and her children used to use it as jewelry for the top of the top. So it was a completely circular place. You know, I want you to put this in your hand, give us an idea what you feel about that. Here's a trick. It's not magnetic. It's not magnetic. It's not magnetic. It's not magnetic. It's not Ladies and gentlemen, some people said that this could be done in the stuff that's a young age six hundred six hundred degrees still fifty small. People think it's incredible. It's not magnetic. No one's been able to identify it. What I tend to do is if it hasn't left Right and all in it, you really have to do it here. Now, this was the first one until now. Before the eldest one on site is set, he was there, we didn't look at it. Now we did. There's one of the two things she gave us. What we're now going to show you is a series of I'm going to take you to the wall, but 
I'm going to take you all around the world and get you to the end finally. Next up, there were two things picked up. Here's the second one. This has been to somewhere based hospital. I'm not allowed to say this because they did all this for free, and I'm not allowed to give up who it is because they were getting big shit for doing this. We took the fracture specialist there, we were told this is the femur bone. When we gave it to him, bone gets black and it gets light as it gets old. What he then did was he contacted the CAT scan unit in a base hospital somewhere. I rang them up and spoke to them and they closed the shop up for one hour and gave us the CAT scan for one hour. I shouldn't really do that. <laughs> I <dropped> them. <laughs> okay, so they put it through the machine and they said, well, give it 10 to 6 times the normal dose because this person isn't going to complain anyway. They closed it off for a, a one hour. We had four people who looked at it to finish. We've got a readout that goes with this. The final thing is the first one said, these people said it has exactly the same density as a human body. The other person said it's a bone and a metaphor. That jewelry could be part of history. It's another question. Someone asked a question. Okay. Look, by the way, please, at any stage, drop me as we go through this. Right. Next up. Still not going to go to the list, but I think I'm going to run there. Well, let me tell you what actual parts of my life did do in the meantime. In that story, it was lovely. I must say, mainly in the context of the teaching, I give the whole story up with all the sites I have to do in this. Next up, bless Recently, you go to Egyptians in the Sky Part 4. We, it's been since 1999 when it was found. The sharks, there was a tunnel underneath, and we take them out, just have a look at the tunnel, try and convince me that that is actually much bigger, goes for 10 meters. We've never seen it. When we were the last one, ladies and gentlemen, straight enough, about six people popped out of there the day before. I don't know how it happened. I got no idea how to put the spot off. I would guess, just a guess, that people must have had widgets to pick up with some of them. The duck inside the shark weighed about four to five hundred kilos. It was just a single duck. Those widgets were taken in 1990 before they spilled it up. You know, I think it's a good shot. That's bullshit. That guy was standing down there. There, you've got to go deep into the tunnel. You're going to go 10 meters that way. Well, luckily, the day we got some people in the West Coast, they sold it out. It's probably three days, I guess. Hello, I'm just guessing there. I'm on the way to the top there, and we're running. Thank you. 
the trap of the the most Yeah, 
Then it's supposed to be fought with their. It is a whip that is made up of four suits, a rectangle, and four ones underneath. Now, there is nothing in the book like this far. If I take this book and get rid of 1,000 pages of paper, I will find it. All surface to present item. If I get a bit of of a sports Thank you. 